In our recent videos, we've included new mobs with high health and heavy attack damage. We call them mini-bosses, and they've been a hit. Enough that we want to dedicate an entire video to them. So get ready, people, because today we'll be going over six new mobs that could seriously mess you up, especially if you're not prepared. But before we do, I'm Dr. Minecraft MD, here to bring you your medically approved dose of Minecraft content. I prescribe you to subscribe and like the video. Doctor's orders! On to the first mob. The first mob on our list has a spooky twist and would make exploring a swamp a whole lot creepier. Introducing the Swamp Troll, not so surprisingly found in swamps. In a swamp biome, a player may come across a large open marsh. In the middle of this murky water, you'll see bubbles start rising before the Swamp Troll emerges. When you see those bubbles, you have to act fast. Do you fight or do you run? The choice is yours. If you do stay, you better come well prepared. The Swamp Troll harnesses the power of nature to attack its foes. Watch out for thorny trubs that will grab onto you. They inflict half a heart of damage per second, so be ready to swing them away. The Swamp Troll moves slowly, but makes up for it with large steps. It carries a massive club, swinging at the player if within a certain radius. The Swamp Troll inflicts 8 hearts of damage per hit on normal difficulty. Though it should be noted, with each swing, the troll will do a 180 and become confused as to where the player went. These are your moments to strike. It also has a slow attack rate, which gives players an opportunity to escape. If you're still dead set on fighting, it's recommended to use ranged attacks, since their movement is so slow. I'd recommend using bows or crossbows with poison tipped arrows. With 100 health, they'll take some time to take down. Upon killing the swamp monster, it will drop a magical bucket of fertilizer and the area around him will become a beautiful field of flowers. Well, that sorta of makes up for how ugly he is. You then can take your newly acquired magical fertilizer and use it in any 10x10 block radius. This will not only act as an enchanted form of bone meal, but will automatically grow all of your crops to full bloom. In addition to this, the area you place the fertilizer will yield a 50% faster grow rate indefinitely. This boss would be difficult to overcome, but could fast track your ability to farm a large amount of crops at once. Have yourself a green thumb and a diamond sword? Go fight this guy! The results might just improve your garden for the rest of your life. Or you might die. Whichever. Next! With the eventual introduction of the mountain update, there would be many snowy mountaintops and ice-cold peaks. On one of them, we propose the inclusion of an ice castle, somewhat similar in rarity to woodland mansions. Don't expect to find Elsa, though. Just let it go. Inside these icy walls would be the ice switch. Starting with 100 health and specializing in magic attacks, this mini boss has the ability to use a spell called Snare, which would freeze you in place for a short period of time. Not only will you be frozen in place, but you will take damage over time. Her power doesn't stop with magic though. She also wields the Ice Dagger, a powerful blade capable of inflicting multiple hearts of damage. Unless of course the player is able to dodge the attack. The Ice Witch will be quick, with the ability to even fly around the castle. All the while, your movement is stunted, slipping around the floors of ice. It's heavily suggested you bring potions of healing, strength, and a new one we're proposing, thawing. This would prevent ice status effects for a short period of time. This would especially come in handy if we add our previously suggested mountain update, Cold, where players get a frostbite effect. This thawing potion could be made with a fire charge, and might just be the tool that helps you defeat this mini boss. If something goes wrong in the brewing process, it has a chance of combusting, causing similar damage to that of a creeper to you and the surrounding area. Handle this potion with care. The Ice Witch would be a powerful foe to defeat. Let me know what you think of the Ice Witch in the comments down below. Next mini boss. This next mob would be found in the most dangerous location in all of Minecraft, the Nether. Since more is being added to it with each snapshot, we thought the timing of this suggestion was perfect. Wouldn't a mini boss in the Nether make it even better? No? Oh, I really thought you were gonna say yes. Regardless, the next mob on our list is the Nether Knight. The Hulking Behemoth would be found in the new courtyard of a nether fortress, and it's ready to fight upon your entrance. Because of the netherite armor he's outfitted with, the nether knight is resistant to lava and fire. And don't think range attacks will work either. The nether knight is able to block arrows with his giant mace, so close range is the only way to battle this mob. If you want to stand a chance against this guy, we recommend outfitting yourself with your own netherite armor. Where the knight has strength, you make up for in speed. Dodging his attacks and striking him when he's not looking is your best way of defeating this foe. Otherwise, you're toast. And not the good kind of toast. Mmm, toast. Not only will he have 100 health points, but he'll also have 20 additional defense strength, making him one of the most difficult mini-bosses to defeat. 
Similar to the Ender Dragon, his health bar will be on the top of the screen, but this isn't just for convenience. Before you're able to kill the Nether Knight, you have to destroy his armor, each piece having strength bars of their own. I'm getting major Dark Souls vibes from this one. Next. I saw it! It was big! It was all wiggly! And it ate everything! That was a Spongebob reference. That's because the next mob on our list is the Bullworm. I don't know if he's from Alaska, but he spends most of his time in the desert now. That's right, native to the desert biomes, these things are anything but regular worms. They would act like tremors, traveling under the surface of sand. You know, that movie starring Kevin Bacon from 1990? No? You're lost. While in the desert, if you hear its rumbles, be prepared for a battle, since oftentimes they will give a shock, emerging from underground to surprise the player. Your best bet at defeating the bullworm is creating distance, preferably on top of a high structure. Once there, prepare your bow or crossbow. Now you wait until it comes out from underground. Once it is, take aim and fire! Oh, and aim for the head, as that's its critical hit area. They have 120 health, so they won't be easy to take down, but this process can be streamlined with fire charges. If you do defeat the bullworm, they have a chance of dropping a few different things. For one, any loot they've eaten during their time in the overworld. This could mean rotten flesh, it could mean diamonds. You'll have to find out for yourself. It will also have a 100% chance of dropping fish bait, which can be attached to your fishing rod to speed up the fishing process a great deal. Overall, the bullworm is another great mini-boss, with the potential of dropping some valuable stuff. Let me know what you think of the bullworm in the comments down below. We covered this mini-boss in our video, 7 Rare Mobs and How to Find Them. Go check it out! After you're done with this video, of course. Okay everyone, I want you to imagine a squid. Got it? Good. Now. Make it look way scarier, and way bigger. Our next mob is the giant squid. Emphasis on giant. They'll be found in the deep sea biome. Not only are they large in size, but their method of attack is terrifying. The giant squid has two main methods of attack. Its beak, which it uses to attack players directly. It also uses its tentacles to drag players down below in an attempt to drown them. If you do kill the giant squid, you'll get both a giant ink sack and various treasure it's collected from shipwrecks. This can really be anything, but there's a decent chance for it to be diamonds. If the monster does manage to grab onto you, start swinging. Otherwise, you'll be dragged to the murky depths. While battling the giant squid, I'd recommend going for its eye, since that is the weak point. I think this mob would be another great addition to Minecraft. While the ocean may be much more full than it was a few years ago, the inclusion of a large enemy would give water biomes the edge they need. Or maybe not. I don't know. I want a challenge, but I want to relax. I'm conflicted. What are your thoughts on the giant squid? Let me know. Let's go check out another mini boss. The next mob on our list is a mythic creature. Some hypothesize this guy's real, but I don't think so. That doesn't mean it can't be in Minecraft though. The next mob on our list is the Yeti, a furry, terrifying ice monster. As you could probably guess, it would be native to colder biomes, specifically the snowy taiga mountain biome. There, it will set up camp in a cave. Similar to the other bosses on our list, the Yeti will have 100 health, so taking him down won't be easy. It is afraid of fire though, so use that to your advantage. It will use its claws to attack, but also possesses the ability to summon a blizzard. This would distort your vision and cause minor damage. Finding the Yeti in that thick fog will be difficult. And scary. Good luck! Defeat it, and you'll have access to its cave, which is full of treasure. It might be a pain, but it's so worth it. Inside the Yeti's chest will be an assortment of random loot, with a high chance of multiple rare items. This mob potentially has the highest bang for your buck. Although it would be dangerous to fight the Yeti, the rewards are high. Is this the kind of mini boss you'd want to go up against? Let me know. Okay everyone, I think we've had enough of mini bosses for today. Let's go back to the lab and do an outro. I think adding these mini bosses to the game would add some much needed difficulty. Besides, Minecraft is supposed to be a survival game. Adding mobs like these would make that even more true. And as a doctor, it is my mission to search for the truth. What all did you think of our list? Are there any mini bosses you would like to see on it? Let me know in the comments. This has been Dr. Minecraft MD. Until next time, this doc is off the clock.